So how's the market right now, Yvonne? The market, steady. Steadiness just means. So what are you seeing right now in the market with your buyers and sellers? There's a little bit of confusion. They ask me, Stacy, what do you think is going to happen with the market? I can tell you what's happening right now in the market and what I think is going to happen, but. The August statistics come out, they're actually comparing July to July of the previous year. So remember that all the statistics in the media are always history and we see the pulse of the market and what's actually going on right now today is what you're going to read about in the headlines in 45 days from now. So what are you seeing right now in the market with your buyers and sellers? There is a pain of some sort. They're not taking action? Yeah. And they're being kind of firm. If they're not in a rush, they're being firm. I do feel the end of summer was kind of a very a lull. It's always a lull because of back to school. Like if you, unless Vacations. you absolutely have to move, you're, yeah, you're getting your vacation in and getting back to school shopping and all the stress and anxiety that comes with and school. House shopping is on the back yeah. burner. So yeah, the showings down for most listings. Mm -hmm. Homes are selling, taking longer. Buyer activity is a little higher than before. Buyers, if they like something, they're persistent, and then they keep coming back and reevaluating <laughs> what they're doing. It just depends. So yes, both sides are getting a deal and having more time to think. Right, yeah. About well, things. Having more time to think. So steady equals having more time to think. The summer has been all about steadiness, and steadiness just means you have more time to think about things and make the right decision. So I've been going on a lot of listing appointments lately where they ask me, Stacy, what do you think is going to happen with the market for the rest of the year? Should I sell now or should I wait? And I don't have a crystal ball. I can tell you what's happening right now in the market and what I think is going to happen, but it's really more about goals and priorities and pain points than it is about whether the market's going to change drastically because I don't see anything changing drastically one way or the other. There is a lot going on per se, but there's a few things that don't change. All right, so let's talk about the statistics that have just come out, the Southwest Florida real estate market perspective. As the pace of sales has gone through a period of decline over the years since the peak of the market, it's a slowdown, steady. Not too many new listings, they're kind of offsetting how long they stay, the inventory. So it's not an oversupply, it could, remains a balanced market. Yeah, because there's been a sustained pullback in the number of new listings. So despite that recently upticking, it has to a large degree counterbalanced the decline in sales and kept the inventory levels in check. Inventory has risen, but thankfully not to the point of oversupply. So I think that in most cases, I'm still seeing equilibrium in the buyer's market in, in certain areas, areas where the desire to move there is lower. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about buyer's market or seller's market, what we're really talking about is the absorption ratio. So in real estate, the relationship between supply and demand takes into consideration the rate at which sales are absorbed, the available inventory is absorbed. So in Southwest Florida, overall, including you know luxury market, balanced is six to 12 months. But in a, a price point where most people are at, we consider four to six months a balanced market. So if you have more than that amount of inventory, so more than six months, then you have a buyer's market because buyers have more choices. And if you have fewer than four months, then it's a seller's market because the sellers are running the show. So even in a balanced market, a seller should definitely be cognizant of how their home is priced, positioned to how you enter the market price-wise, that even though homes are selling, Buyers have more options, so the days of homes selling in a week with multiple bids, of course, are gone. On average, right now, Southwest Florida is seeing homes being sold in 70 days at 96.7% of the list price. Not the original list price, but the price that they're the asking at the moment when they go under contract. While different from what those who sold during the peak experienced, these numbers stack up very favorably compared to balanced markets of the past. For buyers, it's very important to remember that although homes aren't selling as fast as they were during the peak homes are still selling and a properly priced home won't remain available indefinitely if it's priced well it's gone so you do have time to think but don't think too far <laughs> take action of course the trends are going to vary depending on your localized market segment which is why it's so important to have a real estate agent we have specialized knowledge and skills to know, guide you to navigate that market and we are pleased to announce cheers <coughs> Once again, John Orwood Properties and Christie's International Real Estate continues to rank as the top brokerage Number in 
month total year-to-date sales volume and transactions in Southwest Florida. So that's the market update, but let's talk about market update is the past, right? That's what's happened in the past. The ink dried and the picked up by the papers and that's the media coverage, right? But as real estate agents, we're on the front line and we are going out on showings, going on listing appointments and hearing what people are thinking today before they actually take action and see the houses and put it under contract and close. And those become the statistics of the fourth quarter. So what are you seeing today as a pain points that your buyers are telling you. There's a little bit of confusion over what's going on from what they're seeing in the media about being responsible for added costs on closing with compensation to their agent. Yep, there's a lot of confusion on that. That varies greatly based on where you are in the country, I think. Okay, what's the second pain point that your buyers are telling you that they're having? Interest rates? Mm. Insurance? Is that still? Insurance a little bit. Yeah. yeah. With um, avoiding flood zones, that's a big thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the FEMA came out with a new map that revised the flood zones. So I went on an appointment yesterday where they're um, they're actually able to get exempt from being in a flood zone. So they're working on doing that before they put it on the market because that's a big savings. Yeah, because a lot of people will avoid. Well, they'll say, don't even show me that one because I don't want to pay for flood insurance. Right. What do you think about buying a house in Florida during the peak of hurricane season? I think it's good. You'll know if something happens. <laughs> you mean going out to look at houses while it's raining? Yeah. You see yeah. where? And the like land. Where the wet where, spots are. Yeah. yeah if you're house. in acreage, mm -hmm. you're going to know if you have a wet yard. For sure. If it's low or whatever. But you always do have those closings that get held up because you can't buy insurance if you have a storm in the box. To take the insurance seriously, we definitely started moving that up to where we get our insurance quotes during our due diligence period. So we have all the information we need and especially because it used to always be that old rule of thumb that you didn't need a four point inspection done unless the house was 30 years old. Now insurance companies are requiring a four point for newer homes and so you don't want your inspector to have to come back out or charge you an extra fee to issue your four point or delay your closing for that. So, so it's I good. always ask ahead. Yep. Or the, and the inspector goes ahead. If we don't confirm it, he'll go ahead and take the photos. And do. So if they need it, we just order it and we have it by the yep. next day. Let's go back to the market report and talk about the statistics for Southwest Florida as a whole, which is Lee and Collier counties. Naples, Fort Myers, and everything in between. There have been 39,000 homes listed in Southwest Florida over the past 12 months. There have been 23,000 sales in Southwest Florida over the past 12 months. Average sales price, so that's up 2%, 814,000. 814,000. The amount of inventory has gone up 60%. 12,000 homes on the market. So our current month supply is 6.26 months of inventory. But prices have gone up 2%. Honing in on the Fort Myers market, the average sales price has gone up a little under 1% over the last year. And our inventory is up 69% with 7,849 houses listed over the last 12 months and 4,448 sold over the last 12 months with the average sales price of 507,000. That's a big difference from 2018. Yes. 273,000. And then Cape Coral, Cape Coral is a different story. So in Cape Coral, we've had 10,247 houses listed over the last 12 months, 5,766 sold, and the average sales price has gone down 1.36%. Actually, the average sales price has gone down for the last two years running. You'll see that in 2022, the prices in Cape Coral peaked and it has gone down since then. That's because the prices jumped so much in Cape Coral from 2021 to 2022. It kind of turned the whole market upside down because Cape Coral has always been a market that people choose because either they're fishermen and they want to have their boat in their backyard or it's more affordable and they live there and then they drive over the bridge into Fort Myers to work or Because wherever. there is a lot more outside of non-HOA housing right. there. But now with all of the insurance reform and flood insurance, that's the biggest thing. Unaffordable. And also because a lot of homes were affected by the hurricane. The storm. So any of those that were sold as distressed listings then brought down the average the sales average price. price. You you can't say that overall the prices went down. No, it's not every house the price the value went down two percent. It's just that the you have homes that are distressed or the lower priced ones are selling. Or they're picking new construction over a resale. Mm -hmm. It's going back to what it is, which is a more affordable area. Right? Normalizing. Yep. So the average sales price in Cape Coral is four hundred and seventy-six thousand four hundred and eight dollars compared to what it is in Fort Myers. Five hundred and seven thousand and five hundred and thirty-eight. 
some of the condos in Cape Coral are really struggling. Like here's Tarpon Point Marina. Right now you have 22 months worth of inventory available. Those are three high rises and each of the high rises have like 14 floors and six per floor. Is a, it's a large community with a marina. Mm -hmm. Remember during like the 2022 craziness of the market, there were like one or two units available for yeah. sale in there. Now you've got 20 available and only 11 closed in the last 12 months. So that's the, the market update. No more fun. Summertime's over. Time to get back to school, back to work. Pick up your Red Bull. Go to bed early. Ugh. Work out. Ugh. <laughs> Did you work out today? I did. What? After four days that I didn't. <laughs> Where'd you work out at? At the at gym? At my house. Okay, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Summertime has been steady and low key and time to think about things, but now that we're back into school, the holidays are upon us, the election's gonna be over and all that noise is gonna be gone from the market. And with the lower interest rates, I feel very optimistic about this upcoming winter season in Florida. What do and you think? spring. Yeah. My prediction is we're gonna see a rise in values that's back to a normal rate. Pace. Yeah. Yeah. And those that need to buy and those that need to sell will find the right professional to do it with. Yes. And we'll be talking to you a lot more about the specific value that we're providing and what our marketing and pricing strategy is because you deserve that. Absolutely. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Make sure you get like a Red Bull sponsorship. <laughs>